Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about kinematics. Probably the first big topic in physics. You learn it right after vectors and basic motion. So, kinematics and the kinematic equations are three or four, depending on how you count them, of the most important equations in all of physics. First, we need to talk about when you use them. You use the kinematic equations whenever your acceleration, which remember acceleration is defined as your change in velocity, also known as speeding up or slowing down, and your acceleration has to be two things. Number one, it has to be constant, it can't be changing, it has to be the same number every time, and the second thing, it has to be non-zero. In other words, if your acceleration is zero, you cannot use the kinematic equations. By the way, if your acceleration is zero, that's just a fancy way of saying you have a constant velocity or a constant speed. And whenever that happens, you would just use this equation instead. So whenever you have constant velocity, you just use that. It's pretty easy. Now let's talk about the kinematic equations. There's four of them. Usually teachers don't teach the fourth one for some reason, but I will tell you it because it's helpful to know. So the first equation we have, probably the easiest, is V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. By the way, for all of the equations, there's different ways you can write them. For instance, I have also seen this first equation written like this, V equals V naught plus AT, where V is velocity and V naught is initial velocity. So if you ever see that, the V naught, that just means V initial, it's the same thing. But I'm gonna be using my notation today because I'm the tutor and my word goes. So that's the first equation. The second equation is delta X is equal to V initial times time plus one half a t squared. This delta x is simply the change in position, which we like to call displacement. And the reason why I have to say displacement delta x as opposed to just x is because you don't always start at zero. What do I mean by that? If I wrote, for instance, x and I forgot the delta sign, then that means your final position is whatever the answer is. And that works great when you're starting at zero, like for instance, you start a race at the zero meter mark. However, if I tell you you start at six, and let's just say you get an answer of three for x, your final position is not three, it's three plus six, because you started at six, so your final position is actually nine. So for that reason, I don't write x, I write delta x, or sometimes delta y, if I'm dealing with the y component, because it's the change in position not just the position. The third equation is known as the squared equation, also known as the no time equation, because it has squares in it, and it also has no time in the equation. There's no t that shows up. v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. And that's a delta that's not an a, and again, delta just means change in position. And then the last equation, this is the one that if you didn't learn it, it's because your teacher didn't tell you, the last equation is delta x equals one half v initial plus v final times time. And this last one, there's like a bunch of different ways you can write it. For instance, I've also seen it written like this, time times v initial plus v final divided by two. That's the exact same thing. So whichever version you prefer, I don't really care. But these are the four kinematic equations that I would recommend memorizing. Even if you get them on an equation sheet, your goal should be to do as many practice problems as possible that you're memorizing these and it doesn't even feel like you're memorizing it. You know what I mean? You've done so many problems that it doesn't even feel like you're trying to memorize it, but you have all four memorized. That would be my recommendation if I were in your shoes. And by the way, the way we're gonna solve these problems is what I like to do. I like to write out the five kinematic variables, V initial, V final, acceleration, time, and displacement, and the goal is we need three of the five in order to solve. And so if I only have two, or let's say I have one of them, or zero, God forbid, then that means that we must be missing them, they must be hidden somewhere in the problem, and it's our job to find them. And once you have three of the five, you can plug it into one of the four kinematic equations. But how do we know which equation will work? Well, we're going to find that out in the next series of videos where we actually do some practice problems using kinematics. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.